Hey guys, welcome to part four of JavaScript under the hood. In this video, we're going to talk about memory storage. Now, just to kind of reiterate what we've already gone over in parts one through three, we know that JavaScript is a synchronous, single threaded language at its core. Operations are executed line by line. We have a call stack that manages our functions and execution context. And if we do have a blocking operation, we can then utilize certain web APIs to write asynchronous code. So you should understand all of that up to this point. Now, I, I want to get into how JavaScript stores data in memory. So there's basically two places we can store data that's on the stack and on the heap. So it depends on the type of value that we're that we're storing, if it's primitive or if it's referenced. So let's go ahead and jump in and start to talk about memory. Okay, so I just want to go over memory management in general real quick. So when you use a, a, a low level language, or I should say a relatively low level language like C or C++, it's up to you as the as the developer to allocate and free up memory manually within your code. And of course, this does make those languages a little tougher to learn and work with. However, they are extremely powerful. Now, higher level languages like JavaScript, Python, Ruby, C Sharp, these languages automatically allocate memory when objects are created and then it'll free up memory when they're not used anymore. And it'll, like I said, it'll do this automatically. So if you create a variable and you don't need it anymore, there's nothing that you as the programmer need to do in most cases. Um, it's just taken care of for you. And this process is called garbage collection. So JavaScript is what we call a garbage collected language. C is not C plus plus is not in those mem in those languages you do have to manage your memory correctly or you can get what are called memory leaks. Now there are certain situations in JavaScript where you can get memory leaks uh, like unwanted references. You can use the browser dev tools uh, memory tab to create what we call a heap snapshot and help you fix any memory leaks. And that's going a bit beyond what I want to get into here. But at the end of this video, I will show you at least how to um, go into the memory tab and look at some objects and so on. Now, to understand how data is stored in the JavaScript engine, we need to understand the data types, or I should say the types of data types. Um, so I know that a lot of you may already be familiar with this, but in JavaScript, we have primitive types and we have reference types or objects. Now we have seven different primitive types, and those are strings, numbers, booleans, null, undefined, symbols, and the most recent primitive type, big int. So these values are stored directly on the stack. And this is called static data. And it's static because it has a fixed size and it doesn't change. Um, the JavaScript engine can allocate uh, a, a fixed amount of memory space for that static data and store it right on the stack. Now, for just about everything else that isn't a primitive, it's a reference type or an object. So this includes arrays, objects, functions. When you create any of these, their value isn't fixed, right? An array or an object literal or whatever, you can add to that. Um, so it's allocated more space than it's actually needed. So it, it can't be stored directly on the stack. It's stored in a much larger area called the heap or the memory heap. And when we access data from the heap, we access it through reference. We don't access it directly. Okay, so just keep that in mind that primitive types like numbers and strings, they're stored directly on the stack and then everything else is stored in a much larger area called the heap. Now, because of the way that data is stored and accessed on the stack and the heap in our code, primitive values and objects can behave differently. So I'm going to show you an example in a few diagrams here of, of exactly what happens as far as how and where everything is stored. Then I'll jump into some code and show you the same thing. So let's say we create two variables with primitive types. So we have name, which is set to a string of John, and we have age, which is set to a number of 30. Now, since these are primitive values, they're stored directly on the stack. So we have our variable name called name, and then our string of John and our age with the number of 30. Now, let's say we were to create a reference type. So we'll use an object literal as an example. 
So here we're creating a variable called person and setting it to an object with the name of Brad and the age of 40. Okay, so as you can see, that value is not going to be put right in the stack like the primitive types. It's going to be put in the heap. And then what happens is person is going to reference that object. Okay, as opposed to the, the value being directly put on. So now let's say we create a, a variable called new name and we set it to name. Okay, so name equals John up here. What's going to happen is now on the stack we have new name and we have the value of John. Now let's take that new name and reassign it. We're using let so we can reassign it to Jonathan. Now Jonathan is put on the stack, but name is untouched, right? It's still John. So this is where it can get a little bit confusing with reference types. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing here. I'm going to create a, a value or a variable of new person, set it to person. And what's going to happen is it's going to point to that same reference that person points to. Okay, the values are not over here on the stack. They're over. It's over here. So it doesn't create a new object. Uh, with Brad and 40 in the heap, it just references the one that's already there. So in that case, if I were to take new person and mutate it so that the name is now Bradley, it's going to update that reference. Now, since person is pointing to that reference, if I were to console log person dot name, I'm going to get Bradley. And that might surprise a lot of people because we didn't directly change person we change new person, but they're referencing that same object. So now we'll jump into some code and do the same thing, but keep this whole diagram here in mind while we're doing this. So let's first off, I'll just comment this. Um, we're going to create some primitive, some primitive types. And remember, these are stored on the stack. And I do have GitHub Copilot enabled here. So let's say let name set that to John and we don't really need the age, but we'll just add that anyway. Okay, so we have our primitive types. Now we want our reference types which are stored on the heap. So I'm going to create, uh, let's say we'll just do the same example. We'll use person and we're going to set that with a name of Brad and let's do age. I wish 36, but we'll say 40. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and do a console log here of name for now. So of course we get John. Now, if I were to create a new variable, let's say new name and set it to name. And we look down here at new name, we get John. And then if I were to reassign this, so we'll say let new name and we'll set it to let's say Jonathan and we get Jonathan. But if I were to log name, that doesn't change, right? Because I didn't I didn't update name. And remember that this value is stored on the stack. Now, if we kind of do the same thing with the object, which is a, a or the object literal, which is a reference type, let's say let new person and we're going to set that equal to person. Okay, if we come down here and we log new person, we get our name and age. If I were to do just like just dot name, I get Brad. Now, if I take that new person and then I mutate the name, let's say Bradley, which isn't my real name, by the way, it's just Brad. But you'll see now if I save, of course, new person dot name is Bradley because I that's the that's what I updated. But remember that it's stored. The object is stored as a reference that both person and new person are pointing to. So if I were to log person name, it's also Bradley. And I think that keeping in mind this right here, this diagram is really helpful because you can visually see that there is a reference here that both of those variables are pointing to. I think without knowing that this can be a little confusing because we didn't update person directly. We updated new person. However, that points to the same object or the same reference. All right. So the last thing I want to do is just give you a very basic intro into the memory tab here in your dev tools, because if you do, whoops, let me just delete this real quick. So if you go to this tab, it should look like this. 
Now, if you do have memory leaks, this is a good way to spot them. You can create what's called a heap snapshot profile, and it will show how your memory is distributed. Um, uh, distributed? Did I just say distributed? Distributed uh, among your pages, JavaScript objects, and also your DOM nodes. So everything that has to do with your, your application, the browser, uh, the window, the global window object, will all be put into this snapshot. So we can come down here and click take snapshot. It just takes a couple seconds. And then over here, you'll see all the different objects that are in memory. You also have the shallow size and the retain size. The shallow size is the actual object, and I believe the retain size is like any other objects that are associated with it. Um, now, to kind of give you an example of, of creating a custom object and looking at it in the, the heap profile here, let's go ahead and create a constructive function to create a person. So we'll just say we'll pass in a name and then we just want to set this name to name and then we can create person objects. So let's say person one is going to equal a new person named John. We'll do two and we'll do three. So person three. All right. So if I save this and we come over here and just reload and then we'll go back to this screen and let's take another snapshot. Okay, so now these three person objects should be in here and I can filter right here. If I just type in person, you'll see that I have my person constructor, which I just created here. And it says times three because I've, I've created three of them. And you can see the shallow size and the retain size. Uh, if we hover over it, I believe, yeah, we can see the actual values. We can see the prototype object. And if I over here, it'll show us where this was actually created you can click on it. That takes us to our sources tab, which we looked at, I think, in the last video, uh, which will show us the, the constructor function. All right. So pretty cool. I mean, if you have memory leaks, it should stick out because you'll have a crazy amount of memory. Um, but again, I don't know too much about this. I don't use it that much. But I did want to just give you kind of a brief introduction and show you that it is here that you can see some of the memory in your heap. All right. So that's going to be it. As far as the series goes, uh, I do plan on adding more videos. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be right now or I might hold off a little while, but uh, I do definitely want to do more of this stuff. And I am revamping my modern JavaScript from the beginning as well. That's that's why I've been working with this type of thing lately. But uh, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.